Hey guys, it's May here and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. I recently realised that it's nearly been six months since I moved to England, uh, which is a bit insane, it definitely doesn't feel like I've been here that long. But on the other side of the scale, it also feels like I've been here for a lot longer than six months. Um, but even still, I always still get questions from people asking me about how I went about moving to England and asking for advice and things. Today I'm going to continue giving you some tips about moving countries and things, but from the perspective of being six months in. There were some things that when I first moved over were obviously priorities and were at the front of my mind. Things like finding somewhere to live, finding a job, um, and settling in and things like that. But even now, six months later, there's still some things that I guess I'm still settling into, um, so I thought that I might just run you through my list of those things. In England, a lot of things here are done by the book and processes take a lot longer so with things like that especially when I was looking for jobs I found that a really hard process there's still some jobs that I applied to uh, like a couple of weeks ago or even months ago um, that have only just been getting back to me to say you know either come in for an interview or no thank you we've found someone else um, and I've obviously got a job now so I don't have to worry about that but I think the job process was definitely the thing that I found the hardest. Um, I've written a couple of blog posts on this so they will also be linked in the down bar down below. One thing that I found really hard to get used to when I first moved to England was the transport. In New Zealand I would just walk everywhere if I was going to uni, if I was going to work, if I was going to meet a friend. Uh, I also don't drive so I didn't really have any other choice. Especially in the last house that I lived in in New Zealand I could see the roof of my work from where I lived so it only took me about three minutes to walk to work so I was very spoiled there. Um, Moving to England where everything will take anywhere between half an hour to an hour to get to, I found that really hard at first to, uh, I guess, not deal with, but I don't know, I just found that really hard. I adapted to it pretty fast, I think, I kind of just got used to, if I had to meet someone at 9am that I'd have to leave the house at like 8am to be able to get there on time. Train journeys when it's rush hour is also just a whole other thing. If you have a personal bubble, it's popped, you don't have it, it doesn't exist. Um, you're all like crammed in like sardines and especially in summer it's really hot, it might be a little bit smelly. It's not the funnest thing but it's just how I have to get to work so I don't really have any other choice if unless I wanted to get a bus which would take me a whole lot longer. Um, but yeah, making this sound really terrible, it's not. The tubes are fine, they're you know, modes of transport, they're really fast and they don't cost all too much. If you're moving to another city or another country that has a significant time difference with back home, you're gonna have to get used to living in two different time zones. Right now in New Zealand, they are 11 hours ahead of England, but with things like daylight savings, there can be times when there's a 12 hour difference and times when there's a 13 hour difference. But essentially it pretty much always means that whenever I'm waking up on say a Saturday morning, New Zealand is having their Saturday night. And when I'm having my Saturday night, New Zealanders are having their Sunday morning. So it can be hard sometimes to find a time that actually works for you and whoever you want to talk to back home but it's just one of those things that you make time for it if you want to make time for it. Some of my friends back home I have definitely lost touch with because they were the type of people that I wouldn't really talk to on the internet like we'd see each other in person and have two hour long catch ups to discuss what our life had been like since the last couple of weeks since we last saw each other. Um, so I think that's kind of like a natural thing that we just lost contact because we weren't used to communicating online uh, but with a lot of my friends we would used to tweet each other or YouTube or whatever and always talk on social media so there hasn't really been a change for them it's just more being I might reply to their tweet a couple of hours later than I normally would um, but yeah the time difference is something that you easily get used to I constantly have the New Zealand clock on my phone as well so that I know what time it is back home a time difference does have its upsides though sometimes if it's 2 a.m. and I can't sleep chances are one of my friends in New Zealand will want to FaceTime or want to have a chat on the internet so yeah it's really not all too bad it also means that your birthdays last a lot longer as well because they're spread out over two time zones so more times for celebrations another thing that I knew going into my move um, but still was a bit shocking when I first moved over here was just how everything is so expensive my rent that I pay in England is pretty much double per month what I used to pay for my rent in New Zealand but you also just have to think about it is that London is a really expensive city to move to so if you're gonna move over here expecting everything to be exactly like it is back home I'm sorry but it's not gonna be like that and you're gonna be in for quite a shock. I try not to compare prices to say what something would be back home in New Zealand dollars just because everything is more expensive here so I have just gotten used to that fact uh, like going back to the rent thing that I talked about if I tried to find somewhere that was equivalent rent to while I was playing in New Zealand it would probably be a little bit of a crap flat um, so yeah you just have to accept that everything is going to be more expensive and be willing to pay more or at least just try and be really bargain savvy which I always try to be 
Uh, and yeah, the last point that I'm gonna make because I don't want this video to turn into a massively long waffle uh, Is to put yourself out there here in England I always try to make sure that I make the most of my time that I'm spending here and actually get out and do things I think it's also a lot easier because London is a massive City like compared to New Zealand as well. It's like completely massive. So there's just so much to do here There's always someone to go and see or like a music gig going on or a big festival or something There's always something to do which makes it very easy to get out and do things. Um, it also makes it easy to get out there and hopefully meet some more friends. I think especially if you're moving to a different country by yourself, it can be really hard and really isolating and I've seen that with some of my friends who have moved over here that they have struggled with not having that support system of their family and their friends and I guess the normality around them. I encourage you all if you are moving countries to go to a concert or go to go to the things that are going on in your city to meet new people uh, put yourself out there if like me you make a lot of friends on the internet in a non creepy way talk to people that are living in your city see if they want to catch up for coffee um, but yeah just try and keep up your social interactions and make a group of friends in your hometown because I think having friends definitely really really helps uh, helps you support it helps you feel a little less homesick and it makes you feel a bit less isolated as well. So that's all I'm going to talk about today. I hope this video was useful. Please give it a thumbs up if it was. And if you're new here and would like to see more of my videos, please subscribe. There'll be links in the down bar below to a lot more information about my experience in moving and different uh, tips and tricks, I guess, for if you're moving specifically to London. So check them out if you're interested. I think that's all I have to say. So I'll see you all next week. Bye.